हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज़ नाइन्थ ऑफ मार्च एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस सो गाइज लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द टुडेज वीडियो इन द टुडेज वीडियो विल बी टेकिंग अप द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एंड आल्सो विल सी इफ देर आर सम रेलिवेंट आर्टिकल्स इन द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग इफ यू डोंट नो यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर पी डी एफ दैट आई विल बी यूजिंग हेयर इन द वीडियो फ्रॉम अवर टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स एंड नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर मूविंग ऑन लेट्स सी द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द एंटायर न्यूज पेपर टू अंडरस्टैंड दट विच आर्टिकल्स विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अवर यू पी एस सी एग्जाम नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल सी द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन नाउ गाइज हेयर यू कैन सी दैट वट मेक्स यूक्रेन अ स्टडी डेस्टिनेशन फॉर इंडियंस एंड अदर्स सो लार्ज नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स दे वर डूइंग देयर परसुइंग देयर मेडिकल एजुकेशन इन द यूक्रेन अर्लियर दे हैव वेंट टू चाइना एंड आफ्टर द कोविड नाइन्टीन देर वॉज दे हैव टू रिटर्न बैक सो बेसिकली लार्ज नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू सम अनदर कंट्रीज सो बेसिकली इन इंडिया देर इज नो अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ प्रॉपर देर इज वेरी लेस अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द मेडिकल सीट्स ओके द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन टू द प्राइवेट फंडेड हॉस्पिटल इज नॉट दैट मच गुड एंड देयर फॉर दे आर गोइंग टू द अदर कंट्रीज हाउ एवर यू डोंट नीड टू गो टू मच इन टू द डीप इन टू सच काइंड ऑफ आर्टिकल नॉट वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन लूमिंग ऑयल क्राइसिस सो नाउ बिकॉज द यू एस say has imposed the sanction onto the russia oil crisis is coming and oil prices is increasing day by day already multiple number of times we have seen this particular thing apart from that nothing new is given in this particular thing then covid may cause changes in the brain finds a new study okay so basically uh, these many studies have come up till now hundreds and thousands of studies have come however these studies are still being peer reviewed okay so you don't need to go into that thing moving on after that we reach to the hindu now in the hindu uh, page in the online edition you get the text and the context section which uh, contains sometimes very good articles so we'll see so today in the text and the context we have the article on the office of the governor so in recent times we have seen that multiple controversies on the position of governor has come so there are uh, basically in this article the consolidated recommendations with respect to the reform in governor's office has been given so we'll see this article with respect to gs paper number 2 the rules around the guardianship of minors so basically different different state governments are coming out with their different different amendments into the civil laws with respect to the guardianship okay so who can be the guardian what are the conditions now what the different governments are coming you don't need to go into that particular thing very much specific and very much hairline kind of details have been given now getting back home safely so this particular article talks about that the government needs to come out with an evacuation plan okay so good article we'll see what have been suggested in this particular article then moving on uh, to the to the main hindu newspaper so guys here let's see on the page number 1 so ukraine drops pitch for nato so we have seen this particular issue very carefully from the very start and we have seen that the russia's primary reason or reason for invading the ukraine was that the ukraine had said that they will join the nato in the past and now the ukraine had said that they are not willing to join the nato moreover they are also ready to negotiate on to the breakaway region particularly the donbas region so let's see that whether this particular thing brings the kind of a truce between the two countries okay however you don't need to go too much into the detail in this particular article fine uh, international flights will resume not important okay amendment proposed to make land pooling mandatory so what is ex exactly the land pooling policy that is something we are going to see after that moving on in the city section clear here you can see that nothing has been given uh, advertisements etc they are coming okay so nothing important into the entire city section the fine women seeks regular jobs respective wage uh, respectable wages so we have seen this particular thing earlier also one ethical dimensions associated with this particular topic that the asha workers they have were on the protest in the delhi earlier now the asha workers are protesting in haryana also because of, they want the regularization of their wages they want that they should be paid above the minimum wages is it clear the retire the pension benefit should also be given to them so basically uh, guys moreover it happens to be a kind of a very important thing because the asha workers they have been at the forefront in the fight into the covid 19 pandemic and their wages and salaries need to be regularized it is a very compelling case however you don't need to go into this particular article just the protest that they are taking it has been provided nothing more than that 
सोसाइटी फ्री ऑफ कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन विल रिमेन अ डिस्टेंट ड्रीम हाई कोर्ट सो गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर मैटर पर्टेन्स टू रिसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन मेड बाय द डेली हाई कोर्ट ओके सो यू नो दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट इन इंडिया द अनटचेबिलिटी द कास्ट कॉन्शियसनेस हैज एक्चुअली बीन हैज बीन अ वेरी बिग प्रॉब्लम सो बेसिकली इफ सम पर्सन इज डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग अगेंस्ट अनदर पर्सन बिलोंगिंग टू सो कोल्ड लोअर कास्ट सो वी हैव द शेड्यूल्ड कास्ट एंड शेड्यूल्ड ट्राइब प्रिवेंशन ऑफ atrocities act okay scheduled caste and scheduled tribe prevention of atrocities act but many a time this particular provision is not applied moreover even the courts they don't uh, basically they they uh, they don't uh, prosecute a person under this particular case many a times the hesitation is there because the punishment are very much strict here clear so the delhi high court has provided that if we will not be if we will not be applying this particular uh, if we will not apply this particular act in the letter and the spirit people will not be deterred and still they will be carrying out with their caste discrimination so just kind of a thing fine however apart from that nothing more is given in this particular thing now moving on moving on uh, further after that uh, the uh, delhi government launches single window facility for installing ev charging stations though this is an advertisement but guys with respect to a case study we can use this particular thing see today the electronic mobility okay electronic mobility e vehicles they are a very much needed thing because of the pollution problem that is there moreover in the cop26 in the cop26 conference of parties 26 we have seen that india had agreed that by 2070 we will also achieve the carbon neutrality and for these all things we need to focus on reducing the vehicles running on petrol and diesel so therefore the electronic mobility e vehicles become very much important in this particular direction the delhi government is doing very important uh, they are doing exemplary work as they have waived off the registration taxes on to the electronic vehicles so the registration taxes have not to be paid so people will feel more encouraged moreover they are also working on building the infrastructure fine the charging stations are not there which is a very big deterrent as people are not feeling confident in buying the e vehicles so a single window facility has been installed a single window facility has been launched for installing the ev charging stations at particular locations and sites fine so this is something which has been there now guys moving on further after that into the state section um, the same regional issues etc has been given nothing very much important okay the advertisements then you will reaching directly to the editorial page okay now uh, uh, poignant reflections that stretch a war's canvas so guys this particular article is talking about a story okay a kind of an interview was taken with a girl where the girl had said that how can someone be so bad in 2020 we have seen the pandemic fine and now the russia is invading the ukraine humanity has already seen such a kind of a crisis and now the russian action on to the ukraine is further exacerbating this particular crisis so a reflection on the people who are suffering there from their lives it has been provided however with respect to the exam academic point is not there into this particular article if you want to read for your own leisure you can read it then revive tax increase stub out tobacco product use now this particular article talks about that government needs to act immediately on reducing that tobacco consumption in india we'll see this particular article then guys clear signals now this particular article see it is talking about that basically over and over again the china has said this particular thing that the usa is bringing the regional instability okay for example the usa is working very aggressively on to the quad quadrilateral security dialogue fine and where the usa says that we are trying to build the rule based order now the china had criticized it china had said that it is just nothing but an asian nato and usa is bringing the tensions into this particular region so guys into this particular article fine what the chinese foreign minister said on march 7 then what was said on the february 4 okay these statements have been given okay with respect to examination much of the uh, academic point is not there okay you don't need to go too much into this global stagflation risk so right now is the world in global stagflation debunking an urban myth about the taj mahal okay so there is an urban myth now guys the urban myth these are certain stories that are around any particular thing but they are not confirmed for example there is an urban myth with respect to the taj mahal that the 22000 of the workers who built the taj mahals taj mahal their hands were chopped off okay so is it real or is it just a kind of an imaginary story such kind of thing has been discussed in this article not important for your exam just please leave it 
then china's take away from the war now guys this article it is just saying that before the winter Olymp basically it had been said that the russian president he visited the china okay and uh, there he might have told to the uh, to, to to the xi jinping that in coming few days we will invade over the ukraine so whether he would have said it if he would have said it what china would have said it such kind of just a kind of a narrative has been given in this article so therefore i will not suggest that this is important for the examination then guys further moving on frostiness in telangana okay then after that uh, we go here and we find here that the, many of the indian students are trapped still okay many of the indian students now they are volunteering to join the ukraine legion now what is this ukraine legion so the president of the ukraine had said that the foreign students or the foreign uh, nationals who are trapped into the ukraine they should join this particular organization ukraine legion which is we will which will be constituted to fight against the russian aggression that has been there so india in indians they became very excited and they said that yes we'll join this ukraine legion and we will be resisting the russian aggression okay fine uh, then guys after that uh, uh, struggle for china's veracity student so the students who had left who came in india because of the covid 19 pandemic now they again want to go to the china for in the wuhan to cast to to again start with their courses medical courses in which they were enrolled but now the government have not given any clarification whether they will be allowed to go or not so there is a lot of struggle now this is something that has been given nothing other apart from this then the political articles no need to go into this particular thing okay then social revolution takes time supreme court so uh, no need to go too much into the detail of this particular article basically there has been a petition filed in which it has been said that in the nda examination national defense academy in the nda examination there needs to be the reservation for the scheduled caste scheduled tribe obc okay so the supreme court says that will think on this particular thing as of now will not say anything then the bangladesh india nepal to move ahead on the mva project we'll see what is this mva pact then joe biden bans russian oil imports to the us already we have seen clear uh, now guys this entire page is filled with the ukraine russia issue sri lanka loses a tusker raja its national treasure nothing important is given then in the business page okay the uh, basically trends with respect to the economy how the ukraine crisis is impacting okay the rising oil price what level it reached such kind of evolutionary things are given policy matters are not here so not very much important for the examination then we have the sports page so guys this is all about this entire uh, uh, newspaper overview i hope that you have understood the overview and now let's start with the newspaper analysis in detail now before starting as we do in our every class i will be starting with the gs quote that you can use in some of your gs paper so today we'll be taking the quote from the coffee annan okay now the coffee annan he says that education is a human right with immense power to transform on its on its foundation rest the cornerstone of freedom democracy and sustainable human development so education has been equated with a human right it is indispensable it has to be given to every citizen every person in order to bring the justice the coffee annan says that on the foundation of education lies the freedom the democracy and sustainable human development only if the education will be there these three pillars will be achieved okay so this is something that has been given a very positive message you can use this particular quote in the essays related to the education even in the gs paper number 4 we can see this particular thing because in gs paper number 4 in the topic number 1 ethics and human interface the role of educational institution in inculcating the values fine is given so how education inculcates values or how education is important for moral well being there also we can use this particular idea so that is all about the gs quote for today now let's move on okay before that the mcq answers for the yesterday so question number 1 correct answer is d question number 2 correct answer is b you can pause the video and can read about these answers and can match with the answers that you had given okay now taking the mcqs for today so the first mcq is with respect to the stagflation because on this particular thing we have taken already the article in the yesterday's newspaper now it has been said that the stagflation in india can also come you just please read these statement and mark the correct statement then 
दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन इज ऑन द प्रधानमंत्री श्रम योगी मानधन ओके वाई बिकॉज वी हैव सीन दैट रिसेंटली जस्ट गिफ्ट अ पेंशन स्कीम हैज बीन अनाउंस बाय द गवर्नमेंट येस्टेज न्यूज पेपर वी हैव सीन सो फ्रॉम देयर द आर्टिकल इज टेकन रीड द स्टेटमेंट एंड आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट ऑप्शन यू कैन जस्ट पॉज द वीडियो एंड कैन मार्क इट नाउ मूविंग ऑन ओके मीन वाइल गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबडी ओके संदीप से सर यू आर गिविंग एब्सोल्यूटली एक्सेलेंट कवरेज ऑफ करंट अफेयर्स आई फाउंड नो अदर सोर्स ऑन पार विद इट it needs to be popularized but for the future of the aspirant congratulations okay thank you thank you sandeep for such a nice comment thank you so much and thank you everybody who all are liking this initiative okay and if uh, there are any other suggestions you can give now moving on taking up the first article so the first article we have taken is from the text and the context section of the hindu newspaper getting back home safely now this particular article we will be using in our gs paper number 2 जी एस पेपर नंबर टू इशूज रिलेटेड टू द डायस्पोरा इशूज रिलेटेड टू द डायस्पोरा ओके नाउ वट इज अ डायस्पोरा गाइज डायस्पोरा आर द पीपल ऑफ वन कंट्री लिविंग इन सम अनदर होस्ट कंट्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंडियन पीपल लिविंग इन कैनेडा इन कैनेडा दे विल बी कॉल्ड एज इंडियन डायस्पोरा चाइनीज पीपल लिविंग इन अमेरिका इन चाइना इन अमेरिका दोज पीपल विल बी कॉल्ड एज चाइनीज डायस्पोरा सो अ वन कंट्रीज पीपल लिविंग इन सम अनदर कंट्री दे आर कॉल्ड एज द डायस्पोरा now first of all before going in this particular article let's see that what is the background of this particular article so guys the background of this particular article goes like this see we now see that large number of students are being evacuated from ukraine they are being brought back to india and this particular operation we have called as the operation ganga operation ganga now before that when the covid 19 pandemic began so many of the nationals were evacuated from so many of the countries clear before that in the yemen find the operation rahat was carried okay so over the so many years different different evacuation efforts have been taken since 1950 india is evacuating its citizens whenever they are trapped into a distressing situation now this particular article says that every time we are evacuating the people we don't have a standard operating procedure every time just a knee jerk reaction is being given though over the period of years india had given a very good kind of response but a dedicated policy for the evacuation is needed to be there in india so what type of policy can be there such kind of suggestions have been given in this entire article so we'll be seeing it now understand this particular thing guys first of all the indian diaspora indian people living in outside countries this indian diaspora is very strong very big diaspora we have one of the largest diaspora in the world fine more than 11 million indians are residing into the different different countries and every year 20 million indians they are traveling internationally so large number of people are trapped in the different countries at a given point of time now up till now more than 30 evacuation operations have been taken by india but up till now we don't have any standard evacuation policy so now we need to build every time guys what happen the wheel is reinvented every time we come out with a new policy now how the the diaspora policy is to be how the policy for evacuating the people is to be designed certain steps have been given now understand this particular thing guys that actually india's large number of people are living in the west asia also and you know that in west asia there is a lot of uncertainty that is there so making this particular policy at this point of a time where the geopolitical winds are very much uncertain is even more important so what is to be done number 1 it has been provided that we need to study our history we need to study the best practices up till now 30 evacuation operations we have done now in all these 30 operations there are certain good things that have happened there are certain lessons that we have learned because of certain mistakes that we have committed so up till now we need to reach uh, read our entire history of last 75 years as the evacuations that we have carried okay and we need to bring a, make a kind of an institutionalized mechanism then the second second thing that has been suggested is that there needs to be an inter ministerial committee now this inter ministerial committee will prepare a detailed manual and the guidelines which are to be followed well while the evacuation of the indians are being taken up now these particular guidelines will con will contain that what is the chain of command
command that is to be followed clear the chain of command what is to be followed what will be the competencies of the different different departments that will be engaged into the evacuation process clear so for all this particular thing an interministerial committee needs to be provided moreover guys i told you that particularly into the gulf region and the west asia large number of indian people are there and this region is also having a lot of instability also so basically in this particular region we need to identify certain regional support bases which india can use if any evacuation process is to be carried into the future we need to identify the assembly points into the major cities of the different different countries where the citizens can be called off if any evacuation is to be carried in advance we need to identify these support bases assembly points and all such kind of things after that it has been provided that the routes for the evacuation fine evacuation by the air evacuation by the ships if it has to be carried the routes are to be identified see now as this ukraine crisis is going on there is a demand that the air space over the ukraine needs to be shut down earlier in libya when there was the insurgency the civil war started their libyan air space was shut down so when the air space over a country is being shut down a different route is to be taken so we need to identify them in advance after that the country specific warden system for the communication with expatriates every country for example let's say there is a let's say there is a saudi arabia in saudi arabia people are living indian people are living so for saudi arabia there needs to be a specific warden who will communicate with the people living there okay so this is something that is to be done after that guys it has been said that india's diplomatic cadre fine the ifs officer indian foreign service probationers they are needed to be trained beforehand it has been said that they are to be given the training by the police or the army as how they have to function in a hostile situation so they are to be trained so that in the war torn times or in such kind of things they can act and can provide a leadership and can help in evacuation of the people so they are needed to be trained by the army and the police then the next thing that has been provided is that guys we need to also invest in cooperative framework see now large number of people from not only india but the neighboring countries are also living into many other countries for example large number of nepali citizens bangladeshi citizens sri lankan citizens are also living in many of the different different countries now when indians are being evacuated these citizens can also be evacuated along with the indians and in turn what we can do we can take some support of our neighboring countries so we need to involve in a cooperative framework so that together the evacuation of all these citizens can be taken at one hand then the next thing that has been provided is that guys basically we need to assign the greater role uh, government have to assign a greater role to the armed forces fine uh, and uh, how they can interact with the civilian authorities in the country where the evacuation is to be done see now let's say we are sending many of the officials we are sending the let's say armed officials for the evacuation so how they need to cooperate or how they need to coordinate with the civilian authorities into that country such kind of training is to be given moreover the arm, army needs to come out with a non combatant evacuation doctrine non combatant evacuation doctrine in under which the uh, personnel will be trained as how they will cooperate there coordinate there second uh, then the next the permanent interministerial coordinating mechanism also needs to be there and this permanent mechanism will be designing the policy from time to time then finally it has been said that india need to invest in the new technologies for the monitoring of our diaspora now see the different people are living so what is their movement where majority number of people are living in what type of sectors they are working so we need to use the technologies so that we can monitor our diaspora better and in case the evacuation is to be done where we need to focus first so that a policy can be made now this thing can be carried by in using our diplomatic missions so basically there need to be the mandatory online registration of the people living into the different different country fine there needs to be their information when they are traveling out clear through the social media fine their information and their mobility can be tracked fine and at the same time it has been said that the aadhar card can be made compulsory for the identification of the people when they are being evacuated many a times the forged identification is also used here is it clear so it can happen that a person of let's say pakistan will say that i am indian and help me to evacuate from this particular place and then you will find that he was not an indian citizen so for that particular kind of a verification uh, aadhar card can be made compulsory but guys this particular thing i just want to say you need to be very careful that we also need to keep in mind that their privacy is not being breached so this is a kind of a doctrine that should be designed by india for the standardized evacuation process 
clear i hope guys that you have understood this particular article i believe it is a very good article and this particular here it can be ex a kind of a question can also be expected clear you can download this entire pdf from the telegram channel now moving on the office of the governor the office of the governor now this particular article we will be reading under the purview of gs paper number two political legislative and constitutional issues political legislative and constitutional issues now guys if you are following the newspaper analysis regularly over the past couple of months we have seen the multiple articles where we have discussed about the conflict going on between the chief minister and the governor often the relation between the chief minister and the governor are not very cordial the reason uh, the problem is much intense into the opposition or the different government ruled states clear so therefore certain recommendations over the year had come by the different different commissions which can be used here so guys you can directly use them in your answers when the question or when the issue of the governor is mentioned now this particular article first of all provides the uh, constitutional background so guys you know that the constituent assembly fine which made the constitution of india had discussed the position of governor at much stretch so when the constituent assembly was debating that how the governor was to be appointed then there comes the article 131 now understand first of all this particular thing article 131 is of the draft constitution in final constitution this article 131 became the article 155 what is article 155 Article 155 contains the provisions with respect to the appointment of the governor. So when this Article 131 in the draft which finally became Article 155 was being discussed at that point of a time it was said that how the governor is to be selected. So number one uh, kind of uh, proposal was there that we can have an elected governor either we can have an elected governor or secondly the governor can be appointed by the president from a panel of four candidates elected by the legislative assembly. So either election can be there for the governor. Second is that the legislative assembly will give the four choices to the president. Out of these four choices, president should choose one as the governor. This was the second alternative. And then the third alternative was that the president will be himself be appointing a governor in a state. Finally, what happened? This third proposal that the president and at its own will be appointing a governor for a state. It was chosen. Now, the Jawaharlal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru had said that such a kind of a thing is actually logical in the India's case also. Jawaharlal Nehru had said that in India, when we see the position of the governor, governor will not be playing any important role. Governor basically has to act and uh, has to take the decision on to the aid and advice of the council of minister. Clear? So why to have a direct election for the governor? And why to have such a lengthy process also where the legislative assembly will choose four people, then the president will choose one. Directly let the president and appoint the governor okay this is something that will be convenient so this particular decision was taken over the years different different commissions have come and they had said that actually the position of the governor has become politicized particularly into the case where at the center different government is there and at the state different governor government is there so how to remove the politicization now guys why the politicization has happened see it has been provided that when the center is appointing a governor for a state the governor act as an agent of the center now when the government in the center is different then that particular agent is obstructing the state government in running their operation what happens what happens many a times it has been seen that the governor has sent a report and had asked that the president rule should be imposed now when the president rule is being imposed into the state the state government is being subverted and these president rules have been imposed only when the states are being ruled by the different political parties many a times guys it has been provided that actually the governor is specifically reserving the bill for the president is it clear when the particular bill is being moved by the state government which is not going in line with the center government's ideology the bill is being reserved for the president many a times governor is not taking any decision on a bill many a times when the governor's discretionary power are there governor is widely using this discretionary power clear so the governor ha office has become a kind of a uh, tussle ground between has become a ground of tussle between the center and the state government so the different recommendations that come number one sarkaria commission 
Now, Sarkaria Commission had provided that number one, whenever a governor is to be appointed, a governor needs to be an eminent person. Eminent person, eminent person means a person of impeccable reputation. Fine, a person which is not having any dubious grounds. So, an eminent person needs to be appointed as a governor. Secondly, uh, someone who is outside the respective state, the person from that particular state should not be chosen as a governor. Some outsider needs to be the governor so that he does not have any personal interest into that particular state. Then the next thing that is being talked about here is that basically uh, uh, the uh, Sarkaria Commission had said that it has been seen that governors after they had completed their term, they go into an active politics. Now this active politics by the governor has been condemned. This thing should never happen. After that, there are certain other recommendations that have been given by the first administrative reform commission of 1966, not second, first ARC. It has provided that once governor completes his term of five years, he shall not be made eligible for further appointment as a governor. Only one term for a governor can be there. Then the National Commission to Review the Working of the Constitution 2000. National Commission to Review the Working of the Constitution 2000. Now it has provided that first of all, Basically, there needs to be a time limit within which the governor has to give the assent to a bill or a time limit within which the governor will give a bill to the president for the reconsideration. So, a time limit of six months have been provided within, you know, this particular thing that when a bill is passed by legislative assembly, it goes to a governor. Now, governor has to take a decision on that particular bill. As of now, no time limit is there. Governor can sit on that particular bill indefinitely also. So, it has been said such kind of thing is wrong there needs to be a fixed time period let's say six month within this six month the governor should give the assent or if he has reserved the bill for the president he should send the bill to the president moreover when the bill goes to the president also president should also should act within a specific time and for the president also the time of three months was envisaged and within this particular time duration only this particular decision is to be taken so guys this is something that has happened in this particular direction however uh, uh, this particular thing has been suggested but guys as of now much of the uh, decision has not been taken <coughs> now secondly secondly after that comes the uh, after that there are the many of the supreme court judgments also that have been there now the supreme court has ruled into the bp single case the supreme court has ruled into the bp single case okay uh, that uh, whenever their power is being changed at the center clear then the governor should not be changed now up, up till uh, as of now guys it has been provided uh, as of now it has been provided that whenever the center when when the power is changing at the center okay the diff the governors are recalled and the new governors are chosen only those people are chosen as governor who are falling in line with the government governor's ideology clear government's ideology so changing of the governor frequently should not be there supreme court has ruled into the bp single case moreover the punchi commission in this particular direction has ruled this particular thing that governor needs to be given a fixed tenure okay and this particular tenure should not be cut short just onto the whims and fancies moreover there is an amendment that has been proposed with respect to changing article 156 and within this it has been said that there needs to be a strict post procedure for removing the governor it should governor should not be removed just because the gover government doesn't feel that the governor is in ideology there needs to be a specific process is it clear or not fine so this is something that has been provided now uh, i hope that this particular thing is clear Now, uh, moving on uh, to the next article and uh, till then I can see that there is a comment. Okay, good morning, sir. What is a star campaigner? Can you explain it? Okay, so guys, a star campaigner, they are the people who are elected, nominated by a political party. Now, these are popular faces. Is it clear? Now, uh, basically, a kind of a recognized political party can nominate the 40 star campaigners and an unrecognized party can nominate as the 20 campaigners. Is it clear? So, these are the people who are uh, who have been uh, are popular faces clear high profile leaders they are actually can be chosen as a star campaigner okay so this is something nothing more than that now moving on so this is about this art article now we'll move to the next article 
amendment proposed to make land pooling mandatory now what is this particular article is all about fine see guys first of all uh, we will be discussing about the land pooling policy here and after discussing the land pooling policy we'll discuss that what is given in this particular article now this particular article first of all will be important for our gs paper number one issues related to the urbanization and their remedies issues related to the urbanization and their remedy now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about the urban spaces the big cities we find that the, 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 the cities have become very much congested sanitation is not proper here clear proper infrastructure is not there the cities have become very much dense so how to develop the particular city clear we need to come out with a plan for sustainable urbanization now for the sustainable urbanization there is one particular proposal that had come now this is not a new proposal from last eight to seven seven to eight years this particular proposal is coming the proposal is that we should come out with a land police pooling policy now what is this land pooling policy now let's just take that suppose this is a big city this is a big city now this entire city has become very much congested now on the fringes of this particular city let's say that there is a certain land which has not been developed now what can happen what can happen the people who are having this particular land okay the individual owners they will pool this particular land together they will pool this particular land together and collectively they will give this land to the government what a government will do government will basically develop this particular land and will give back this particular land to their owners clear what government will do government will, let's say that 100 acres of land is there 100 acres of land got pooled by the different different farmers and these 100 acres were then given to the government government will develop the roads sewage network uh, drinking water piped uh, piped drinking water network will be built electricity uh, infrastructure will be built okay different different other utilities will be built some land will be kept aside for the community center some land will be kept aside for schools fine hospitals is it clear fire fighting unit uh, 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 okay okay so such kind of infrastructure will be developed and the land will be given back so guys actually what happens around 60 to 70 percent of the land is given back to the owners why because on other, on other remaining uh, portion 30 to 40 percent land these other units have been developed clear so this is something the land pooling policy where the land is given to the governor government government develops the land and give it back to the people now what people can do people can use this particular land for building their houses there or they can sell this particular land to some another person who can construct their a multi-story building can construct the housing society etc so this is the land pooling first you collect your land you give to the government the government develops it gives you back the entire hundred percent land is not given 60 to 70 percent land is given all these particular thing is written here you can read it now guys for that delhi the land pooling policy came way back but as of now the land pooling policy has not worked effectively why it has not worked effectively because let's say that there are the hundred people there are the hundred people whose land is to be pooled there might be certain two five ten people who will not give their approval they'll say that that we don't want to pool our land suppose this is a big land packet that is to be pooled now there is one packet here one small packet here one small packet here these are three people they say that we don't want to give our land so obviously this entire packet cannot be pulled together if these three people don't want to give in so therefore now the amendments are being moved to this land pooling policy of india it has been said that government is saying that if the 70 percent of the people have approved or have agreed that we are ready to give our land then it will be believed that everybody's consensus has been taken so once 70 percent people say then the land will be pulled together but government had said here that there are certain category of proposal that is the proposals which are very much important and government can notify such kind of proposals and said that in those even the minimum threshold of 70 percent is not needed even if it is not given then also the land can be pulled so this 70 percent consensus limit is being imposed here now guys such kind of land police pulling policy becomes very much important if the sustainable development of cities with a dignified living condition is to be provided so good article i hope you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article revive tax uh, increase 
sub uh, stub out uh, tobacco product use now this particular article guys uh, if you remember if you're following it regularly i think uh, one or 1.5 month back we have seen the exactly same kind of article clear with respect to the tobacco consumption how to reduce it so if you remember you can just recall it out otherwise let's see from the scratch also what has been given now this particular article will be important for our gs paper number two gs paper number two issues with respect to the health issues with respect to the health now what this particular article is saying basically guys first of all when we talk about the tobacco consumption you might be knowing that so many people they are dying because of the tobacco consumption they are getting infected with the deadly cancers because of that tobacco now basically the tobacco has been a silent killer silent killer uh, it is uh, it kills up estimated 1.35 million indians every year around 13.5 lakh million people are being killed every year 3500 indians are dying every single day because of the consumption of the tobacco and it is also leading to an economic burden of around 1.5% on india's gdp how the economic burden of 1% is there guys it is because of this particular fact that many a times the young people are dying because of the tobacco consumption now these people were the productive human resource of our country and being a productive human resource they were contributing into economy and when these people are dying what happens an economic loss to our country also happens fine you might have many a times i have explained you the concept of demographic dividend concept of demographic dividend what is demographic dividend it is provided that sometimes your population provides you the profit that is the dividend demographic dividend means that see whenever in a country there are large number of people who are not a dependent there are large number of people who are into the working class they can contribute into an economic activity and can provide the economic Uh, benefits to a company country so we have a demographic dividend we have a young population who can contribute into economic activity and can provide at the economic advantages that but when these people are dying because of the tobacco consumption we are losing on our demographic dividend we are losing 1% of india's gdp who says that we are living in what in a tobacco epidemic in a tobacco epidemic tobacco consumption is increasing day by day now there is one particular short short strategy that had worked very well and had reduced the tobacco consumption that is making the cigarettes and tobacco products more and more expensive it has been the research has shown that when the price of the tobacco product increases it induces people to quit okay when the tobacco becomes expensive people quit it or basically the new users they are discouraged from the tobacco when the cigarettes are very much expensive this is something that has been there so there needs to be very high taxes on to the cigarettes now guys first of all what is the who suggestion who suggests that the taxation on to the tobacco products need to be 75% of the retail price of all the tobacco products let's say 100 rupees is the price of the cigarette then on to this 100 rupees 75 rupees tax needs to be there so at the end of the day the cigarette price for the customer will be 175 so 75% of the tax needs to be there on to the cigarette or the tobacco products now guys in india in india what had happened since the gst came the goods and services tax came in 2017 there have not been a significant tax increase on the tobacco products is it clear just in between we came out with the national calamity contingent duty under this national calamity contingent duty additional duty was imposed on to the tobacco products tobacco product became little bit expensive but how much just 5% expensive because of this particular duty now guys understand first of all when we talk about the tobacco products such as a cigarette on the cigarette the gst is being imposed but along with the gst there are many of the additional duties that are also being imposed on to the tobacco products right now on the tobacco product 28% of gst along with it some of the additional taxes are also being imposed clear now guys today if we see there is a 65% of the cess on to the tobacco products that are there in total what is the effective tax rate on to the tobacco product 52.7% is the tax rate on to the cigarette 28% gst and extra duty on cigarette 52.7% tax is there on bds 22% tax is there on uh, 63.8% tax is there on to the smokeless tobacco clear now guys what who recommends who recommends a 75% of tax but our tax is very much less than the 75% so therefore it has been said that the gst council need to act and need to increase the taxes on to the tobacco products clear now the gst council which decides the 
uh, which can actually decide the compensation cess levied on tobacco product they can increase it and increase the compensation cess on the tobacco product to such an extent that they become expensive and people are not very much uh, people they quit the smoking clear this is something that has been provided now it has been said that why the cess that has uh, been applied onto the cigarette it has been less it is not serving any kind of a health benefit so we need to act immediately and need to increase the taxes so that the people are uh, uh, the, so that the people can quit the cigarette because of the discouraging effect of the taxation that will come so that is something that has been provided in this particular article now we'll move to the next article now the global stagflation risk guys uh, basically this article is talking about the stagflation which means the stagnation of economy and the inflation combined now stagflation is a very rare condition because the inflation has been believed to be a mark when the economy is booming when the economy is thriving the inflation comes but coming of inflation when the economy is stagnant has not been a very common phenomena so right now it has been said that the global stagflation risk is there and even in india the stagflation risk is there why because of guys two reasons two reasons number one the covid 19 pandemic had already slowed down the economy and secondly because of this russia ukraine crisis that is going on what happens the oil price is increasing and when the oil price increase it brings the inflation clear inflation will come because of the oil price and already the economies are not doing a good so a stagflation will come however in the yesterday's newspaper at 8 minute 41 second fine i have discussed this entire issue already into the much detail because the indian express article came on the same thing now the same thing has been repeated again so if you have seen the yesterday's article no need to go again however if you have not seen the yesterday's article i will ask you to watch the 8th of the march newspaper discussion at 8 41 this entire issue has been discussed because both are talking about the stagflation only clear so this is all about this particular article now we'll move to the next bangladesh india nepal to move ahead on mva motor vehicle agreement pact now before uh, this particular article can be discussed under the gs paper number two gs paper number two neighborhood relation neighborhood relations now before going in this particular article guys just we will see in the background what has happened so basically guys the four countries that is the bangladesh bhutan india nepal bangladesh bhutan india nepal now the four countries here you can see we have the india we have the nepal then we have the bhutan then we have bangladesh now in these four countries actually we have uh, we, uh, from the ancient times we have carried so much of trade people to people ties are there economic ties are there fine then the people are dependent on each other for their livelihood clear so basically in 2015 a kind of a proposal was made and in this proposal it was said that a bbi and mva will be signed it stands for Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal Motor Vehicle Agreement. As a part of this motor vehicle agreement, it was said that the countries will allow the cargo trucks that they can pass in each other's territory and can take the goods from to and fro. And by this, the trade between the four countries will increase. So the motor vehicle agreement was proposed in 2015 between four countries, BBIN. Now, guys, initially the Bhutan said, Initially, the Bhutan said that, okay, we will join this particular thing. But after few months, the Bhutan refused. Bhutan said that we will not join this BBIN. What was the reason? Reason was that, that the Bhutanese parliament said that this particular plan will bring a lot of problem on their environment. When the trucks, the motor vehicles will come into the Bhutan because of the free pass that they will get by this BBIN MVA, the environment will be deterred. The pollution problem will come there now guys first of all if i tell you the bhutan happens to be the one of uh, the, the only carbon neutral country carbon neutral country fine one of the carbon neutral country what is a so not sorry carbon neutral carbon negative country one of the only carbon negative country what is carbon negative whatever the carbon emission they are doing more than that they are absorbing so the bhutan is already a carbon negative but still they wanted to conserve their environment and they said that will not join the bba or bbin mba now so many years have happened since 2015 this particular thing is going on now we are in 2022 seven years had happened now the bangladesh 
Bangladesh and India, Nepal, these three countries, they say that we will move ahead on this particular MVA pact. If the uh, Bhutan doesn't want to join, they might not join, but we will proceed on this particular thing. So this is something that has come. Okay, now apart from this, nothing more is given in this particular article. The progress is going on. Now guys, here you can see that when we talk about this BBIN, okay, it will be passing like this, that here there's Bhubaneswar. Bhubaneswar, Ranchi, Patna, clear then we, we will be going through the uh, around the borderline of the Nepal, okay, then this will be the route, you can just pause the video and you can see, okay, so it will be covering all the four countries, but now the Bhutan will be the out of question, so therefore from Nepal directly we will be going to the Bangladesh, not to the Bhutan, clear, so this is all about this particular thing, I hope guys that you have understood this particular article, okay, uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, sir, current affairs ke liye kya kya padna chahiye? Okay, see, the newspaper is the golden source because everything is being prepared after the newspaper only. Clear? Whatever the magazines are coming, whatever the compilations are coming, nobody is making the compilation out of his own. Everybody is referring to the newspaper and from newspaper only, everything is being made. So, the newspaper happens to be the gold mine. First, prepare the newspaper. After that, if you want, you can go for reading some other kind of magazines which are having some other kind of an opinions. But in order to make the sense for some other magazines, you need to have your basics of newspaper very clear. So this is something that you should follow. Okay, so guys, that is all about the today's newspaper analysis. With this, we come to an end and uh, now we'll be meeting tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourselves. Thank you so much.